Hello, my name is Ahlam, and I came from Yemen. And this is my city, Sana'a. In my country, there is a war since 2011, since the Arab Spring started, but not many people know that. Let me talk with you, or let me tell you a bit about the war, or let me share with you the first day in the war. It was one of the worst days in my life. So in that day, I went out to apply for a job. And then when I went to go back to my home, I was already start uh, hearing the shooting and the bombing everywhere. So my mom called me when I was already close one kilometer to the home. And she told me, Ahlam, don't come back. Try to go to your grandmom house or stay in some uh, place safe, and then we will try to come to pick you up. So, I was stuck. I was in the middle, so I couldn't go there or there. So I just got to neighbor and I told them if I can stay till my family will come to pick me up. Um, so the shooting started become more and more and I was just afraid if my family can really do it. Because my mom told me the car for shooting was in front of our door. So I don't know, I felt like for sure they will not do it and maybe they will die in the street when they were trying to escape. Um, it was the stress, the stress hours for me, I think, in my life. So I was pray for them and cry so hard, and I just want them to come to wake me up too, because I don't want to die alone. So my mom called me after some hours, and she said, "We are safe. We made it. We are in our grandmom house, but we couldn't come to wake you up." I freaked out. I was like, "I don't want to stay here." She said. Let's see what we're going to do in the morning. Because they really couldn't come to wake me up. Of course, no one can sleep. And the house that I was in was close to the military camp. So the shooting was like all the time. So we had to lay on the floor because the shooting was entering from the window, stuck on the wall. So if we didn't lay on, on the floor, we will die absolutely. I couldn't stay for a long time. I decided to leave. So in the early morning, I took myself and I went out. The street was so empty. I couldn't find a taxi or a car, of course. <laughs> so I decided to walk, to go to my family. I walked fast and I was holding my, my heart in my hand and I was just waiting to hear the shooting come to me and kill me. No one was on the street. And I saw a real dead body for the first time in my life. I was like, no, I felt like I'm in a movie. I couldn't control my tears. I was crying and I was like, try just to focus on the way, running or walking fast. And I couldn't forget that picture till now. But I arrived to my grandmom's safe. And I told my mom that I came with a taxi. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> and we couldn't go back to our home for one year. And then my mom said, let's go to our home. Not because it's safe, because we are done from escaping. So my mom said, if we're going to die, let's die in our home. And she was right. This is me two years ago. Can you recognize my blue eyes? <laughs> yeah. So the situation for women in Yemen was nothing changed before the war and after the war. In, 2000, in 2015, I get, uh, sorry, I had a dream, first of all. I had a dream, and it was a crazy dream for women from my country, that one day I want to live on my own and to be responsible of my old decision. I want to have a flat and to have a cat. <laughs> but it's really difficult for a girl from my country. So, in 2015, I find something makes me start live the dream for a while. 
I get a chance for an internship in Germany for three months. I was so happy that my dreaming will become true, even for a while. So this is the first day when I arrived to Germany, and this is Karina, and it was the first day, too, to meet her. It was really a happy day, but at the same time, it was so stressful. I mean, to be in a different country, different culture, different language was super stressful for me. So my name is Karina, and I run an NGO called The Global Experience. And amongst others, we organize intercultural exchange programs. So we had this internship program for young people from the Middle East. And Ahlam wasn't the first uh, intern to come to Berlin, but she was probably the first one who came directly from a conflict zone. And this was really new to us, and it was different for us. And the next weeks, they were basically a mutual learning experience for her and for us. And there were many things we did for the first time, like riding the bike, <laughs> or standing in the rain in the forest. Imagine that this was so special to her. We also um, explored a lot of different things. There were a lot, a lot of things that we saw for the first time and did for the first time. But we also had difficult times, because there were lots of misunderstandings between us and also lots of different expectations. And so it was a really intense time, and there were so many things to learn. But the good thing that the longer we know each other, the better we understood each other and we respect our each other, sorry, each other culture. Um, After my internship ended, I couldn't go back to my country because they destroyed the airport in my country. So my life changed again, suddenly, and I became a refugee in Germany. And after a few months, I realized that not everyone like Karina. I met many people who they have a bad image about Arab. That hurt me a lot, and I couldn't deal with it. There is a lot of stories, and many things happened to me just because of that. Like one time, I was in the bakery, and there is a woman, she was just yelling an argument because she saw that it's her right to order before me. And she didn't, she didn't stop argument till I left. And another time in the camp, and I get physically attacked from a German security. He wanted to punish me because I wasn't on the line. I couldn't deal with that, and I get hurt so much. I cried a lot, and it's something difficult to accept it. A refugee word makes us feeling humiliated. So we don't need someone to make us feeling more humiliated. It's not just me and my story. There is a lot of stories outside, and many things happen to other people, even not refugee, other people who they are student or worker, but they look like refugee. When Ahlam tells me stories like these, I feel so ashamed for my country. Imagine Germany being a country that committed some of the worst atrocities in human history. And still, 80 years later, we are like this, 80 years later, we have people who hate other people just for being different. This is crazy, and it's not just Ahlam's story. There are many stories, and when we look at the statistics, we actually see that the hate against foreigners has been growing after the so-called refugee crisis. So this is from a research study from the University of Leipzig. They asked people in Germany, should Muslims be banned from entering Germany? A few years ago, already 20% agreed on that statement. Today, it's 40, over 40%. This is crazy. Another statement was, because of all the Muslims, I sometimes feel like a stranger in my own country. Guess how many people agree to that statement? It's 50%. So that means every second person in our society feels 
sometimes like a stranger, in his own country, just because he occasionally sees a girl with a hijab in the streets. How is that even possible? So when you ask people, what is the reason for that? You can ask people in the streets, you can ask politicians, you can ask scientists, and you will get lots of different answers. Because this is complicated and there is not just one answer to it, but many. However, when we looked for an answer, we tried, we found one answer that did not only focus on the problem, but could provide a solution too. And this is called the intergroup contact theory. It basically says that the more contact we have with certain groups, the less likely we are to hate them or fear them. Let me show you an example from Germany. A very recent one. So these are two maps from Germany, from 2015. On the left side, you see a map where you see where foreigners are actually living in Germany. And you can clearly see the blue spots are those ones that have lots of foreigners, which is basically the big cities and the industrial areas. However, we also have regions with almost no foreigners at all, which are in the yellow regions. And they have 2% or less foreigners. On the right side, you see a map with attacks on foreigners. And the darker spots are those ones with more attacks. And this is really crazy, because if you look at this, you see that those regions where there's almost no foreigners have the, the highest density of attacks on foreigners in whole Germany. So this means those people who, who probably don't know as like a lot of foreigners, they also have more attacks on foreigners. But on the other hand, that means if this is true, we could increase the contact and lower the hate. So that was our basic thought when we started our project. And we thought we have to come up with something that would just increase the contact between people. And this is what we came up with. In December 2015, I shared my story in front of a German student class. I was afraid that maybe they will not listen to me or maybe they will not be interested to know about me. And it was the first time for me to talk in front of other people about myself and my country and my story. But after a few minutes talking there, I become more comfortable and confident because they were asking a lot and they were so interested to know more and more about me. And I noticed that most of the question was related to the religion, like, are you Muslim or not? And why you are wearing hijab? And so on. And I saw, or I understood too, the German perspective about, or because of their media. So we continue going to a school, sharing stories and answering questions. I really want them to understand that we didn't come to steal their country like some said. I mean, who gonna leave his family and his friends and his life, his house, just to come to other country and do something bad on it? I tried to make them open their mind to understand more about the refugee and integrate, integration. And I think I did, and I made a change. And one time there is a group, student group, who sent me a card for the Christmas and all the students wrote for me a meaningful sentences that really touched my heart. I felt so happy and I felt that I really did change here. Ahlam's experiences in the school classes were really unique. So we started to expand our project and our team. And today we are very proud of having over 20 young people going to school classes all over Germany and talking about their lives back home before the war, during the war, and their journeys to Germany. So in the past one and a half years, we have reached out to 50 different schools already and to 1,500 different students. We have also collected some data that help us understand our impact and the way we can further develop the project. So our friend Martin has actually sent a questionnaire to some of those schools who participated in our projects. And amongst others, he has asked them, 
Have you been in contact with refugees before? And to our big surprise, 71% said, I have had no contact or almost no contact before your presentation. Which is interesting, because there are a lot of refugees in Germany now, and in almost every little village there's refugees. But still, it means that most people are not in contact. Most people don't know each other's stories. So this is something where we can make an impact. You also asked, did you gain a better understanding of what life in a conflict zone looks like? So this is our very basic goal of the project, to help change perspectives. And 95% of them said yes. So this is a very good start for us, because it means that with our project, we can actually make a difference. Now, you might wonder what a two-hour encounter actually can change in the long term, or if it can change anything at all. Well, we believe it can, because our workshops are not just regular presentations in schools. They are very intimate ways to getting to know a person and a different perspective. And we can see from the way the students relate, um, how they react, we see how they relate to the stories shared by the refugees. We see that they are shocked about the stories. We see that they are sad. We see them asking lots of personal questions, and sometimes we even see a whole school class crying over the whole stories that one of our team members shares. Imagine the moment when you have to say goodbye to your mom, and you don't know if you will ever see her again. Or imagine that moment when you lose one of your best friends in a bombing. This is something that happened to almost all young people in our team. But only if we share those stories, we can make others understand what it means, and we can actually open up a dialogue. So this is our big dream. It is our big dream to share more of these stories and encourage a lot of other people to come along the way and join us. So if you are a refugee, don't be afraid to share your story. It's the only way to make the society better. Even if it's sad, share it. And if you are a local and you still didn't hear a refugee, make sure to get in touch with one and listen to her or his story. Believe me, it's the only way to make a change. Thank you.